we got a. There's been a couple things happening in the league, I guess, over the last week. Yeah, right now they have, like, the coaches meeting or whatever, so that's kind of cool. Like, did you see that one picture that they had of all the head coaches, yeah. dude? Yeah. That was a whack-ass picture. That, yeah, it was. Bro, that was funny as hell. Like, one of the main guys <laughs> from, uh, like, Good Morning Football or whatever, or whatever, I, like, it's not Peter Schrager, I think it was, like, the other guy, Kyle Brandt, I think his name is. Or okay. Something. It was him, like, he was, like... All right, like, I'm sick of these shitty-ass pictures of these head coaches. <laughs> like, he's like, we are a billion-dollar organization. The least we can do is have a good picture of head coaches. Like, he's like, we have this beautiful facility that you're at at this million-dollar resort. And you guys can't take a good picture? It's a parking lot picture. <laughs> he's basically, like, in front of, like, these fountains. He's like, no one. That is crazy. The NFL. On somebody's I, iPhone? Yeah, dude, he was basically like, I volunteer to take this picture for you guys so we can orchestrate it so it actually looks good. He was like, and he called it out. Like, he called out everything that was wrong. He was like, why do you have Ad Reed in this top corner where no one can see him? He's your he's your golden boy. You have him in the middle. You have him holding the football. Oh, shit. And, like, he just went in on everything. He's like, Matt Rule, I love you, dude, but, dude, you can't be in the front. We got to get you in the back. Isn't Peter Schrager, like, best friends with Kyler, um... Kyler's coach. I think oh, Cliff Kingsbury. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury? I yeah. think so. Yeah, I think they're boys. I yeah. bet you they both like just like come together and like point out all the <laughs> shit that's like whack about it. Yeah, well, I don't think it was Peter. Well, Peter probably does the same shit, but like I, mm-hmm. this was like a different guy who went in on the actual picture. Okay. But yeah, dude, like I just think that, I think that's just the funniest fucking shit in the world. But that is. Yeah, it was a pretty funny picture. Yeah, man. What else is going on in the NFL right now? Yeah. I mean, obviously, we're just ramping up into uh, the draft. Uh, obviously, uh, throughout uh, the sense we've talked to y'all, there's been a couple pro days. So since then, there's been some people who uh, naturally their uh, their stock have been rising. Uh, there's been a couple fallers just uh, since the combine. Uh, you know, just when people have finally gotten to talk, you know, NFL coaches, they're saying who they are starting to like, who they don't like, you know, just what they want in their system. So, okay, you know, I've, we've kind of, at least I have uh, combined, like, at least compiled a bit of a list of who I think stock has been rising. Uh, I'll go in kind of deep on a couple of these guys, um, but in no order, uh, Jalen Tobert, uh, Vallis Jones, Malik Willis, George Pickens, Greg Dulcich, uh, Jelani Woods, Zamir White, Sky Moore, and Brian Robinson. Um, those are just a couple guys that really have been just kind of rising up in their stock. Um, the reason why, uh, you know, a lot of head coaches, they finally got to see Jalen Tober for the first time, or GMs, they finally got to say, uh, see him at the combine. Yep. For the first time in person, a lot of them probably fell in love with, you know, a guy who's naturally 6'3". Like, when they had it on the program at their school. He's a great profile, yeah. Like, they weren't lying about that. Like, this guy is naturally... He runs great routes, too. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like, it's just great that uh, GMs were finally able to see this guy. So, they're projecting that Jalen Tolbert, somebody that we talked about in a few of our earlier episodes, mm-hmm. he was someone that we were both pretty... Pretty high on, a, mm-hmm. I, I would say, at least. Um, Jalen Tober is a receiver out of South Alabama. Yeah. So not Alabama, but South Alabama. Yep. And Jalen is a wide receiver. He's about 6'2 or 6'3. He's um he's kind of like an AJ Green prototype. Yeah. That's how I profile him. Like he's a little like slender, but like he's tall. Yeah. And um he runs a he has a great route tree. He catches the ball at um its highest point. He seems to have just, Enough agility and acceleration to get downfield. Yeah, and, like, I mean, when you looked at his numbers and stuff, like, he seemed to kind of, like, explode at the combine. Like, yeah, it was... He's like a DJ Moore profile. Something like that. Like, he, I think he's a little bigger than DJ Moore. He might be taller. I, I think so. So, I don't know. Like, I... I like the guy a lot. I think he has definitely risen from, like, where, like, a lot of people, I think, naturally had him around, like, the fourth or fifth, just because he was from a small school. But now people have finally seen him. Like, we're starting to see maximum in the second and third. 
So naturally, his uh, stock is going to be rising, um, you know, within the fantasy ranks as well, especially in Dynasty, because teams are going to want him more and value him more if they're picking him in the sixth or uh, second and third. You know what I'm going to say? He also seems to have um good body control yeah he's 6'3 he's like 190 every year he's had six or more touchdowns outside of his freshman year where he was minimally involved yeah um he's had i think like six to eight touchdowns all three years last year Mm -hmm. um, at south alabama he had about 1400 yards Mm -hmm. and he was productive and i would imagine he has a high touchdown share because you know down low he's one of the tallest people absolutely um in the red zone at least he's a. Uh, I think that he's somebody who if they fall into a situation like going to kansas city mm-hmm. if jalen tobert ended up with patrick mahomes in kansas city or if he ended up somehow on let's say the chargers i think if he goes somewhere where they have elite quarterback potential they could really bring the best out of him yeah and absolutely i mean yeah he could be long- a, he, i think he goes as a sneaky good wide receiver too in rookie drafts but if someone took him a little bit higher, I wouldn't be mad at him. I think in the NFL, he's projected to be a second, as yeah. as of right now, a second or third round pick. Yeah, I would say uh, right now in uh, Dynasty and everything like that, you're probably looking at the same thing um, mm-hmm. around that second, third, kind of just depending on landing spot, if he's going to be behind a bunch of wide receivers, you know, basically just whatever his uh, situation is looking like. Mm-hmm. Next person I really want to talk about, oh. uh, just you know, because their stock is rising, is Malik Willis. I know we talked about him last week, so just mm-hmm. briefly talking about him quick. Uh, wide or I'm sorry, quarterback out of Liberty. Um, he <clears throat> has tree trunks for legs. It's unreal what he looks like in person. I've never seen him in person, but I mean, just looking from <laughs> on tape, maybe compared, one day. Yeah, you know, compared to what other people have compared, like it, he's. They say that it looks like he has tree trunks for legs. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, it really shores up a lot of those misconceptions of, hey, like, how sturdy is is this guy in the pocket? You know, like, a lot of people look at their legs, especially the quarterback's legs and hands and arms, typically. And, obviously, they're smarts. Um, And this guy, obviously, seems to check all the boxes. So, um, right now, like, some people are mocking this guy going number two to the Lions. People and, are saying, or him to the Panthers. Yeah, so, like, there's a couple landing spots. So, I think, naturally, that starts to rise his stock up in Dynasty. So, like, right now, like, even on Sleeper, um, if you were checking on, like, the mocks beforehand, they're mocking all, like, those quarterbacks, typically, are like, around the third. Okay. Now they have Malik kind of going towards, like, the end of the first, like, the 110, um, early second, stuff like that. So, like, that's kind of surprising to me. So... So, um, you know, I just think if you need a quarterback or, like, if you're on the verge of needing a quarterback, if you don't have anyone young, I definitely think that this guy is worth taking either if you have two first or, you know, something like that, or if you have an early second that you just want to take, like, a flyer on someone, I think this guy could be well worth it because... If he goes to Detroit, I would actually take a swing on him. Yeah, I mean, it looks like they're kind of getting targets down there um, for, uh, yeah. you know, for someone. TJ if, Hawkinson, they have Amon Ra. Yeah. They um, have DJ... Chark. DJ Chark. And, I I mean, they have a couple of those other guys, Both like uh, Raymond and all those guys. Yeah. But, like, you know, like, um, I don't know. I just think, I think it would be a good fit, and especially with uh, Dan Campbell there. I think he'd be the most enthusiastic guy for him and try to build him up, which I think would be great. That'd be dope to see. Yeah. Um. Next, you know, let's let's talk about George Pickens quick. I really like this guy. He's starting to rise up a little bit. I feel like a lot of people are starting to get over his ACL tear. I think mm-hmm. that's been holding some people back. Um. But it looks like he's back in full potential, back in full swing. Um, I'm I'm excited about this kid, man. What What are your thoughts on George Pickens? I'm a little hesitant. Why are you hesitant about him? I'm a little hesitant because, and this is just my own weird personal theory, but he just sat out the last year with injury. Yep. He's coming off of a pretty major injury, and we don't have a ton of film of what he's going to do. Well, like, obviously, like we said, last year he came back towards the end of the season. Yeah. 
and you got a little bit of insight into what he's capable of coming off that ACL injury. Yep. But if you're going to transition him into a new offense now, like, that kind of matters to me. Like, does the NFL offensive scheme that he goes to match what he's what he was productive at in college? Or is he going to have to now come off a major injury and learn a new scheme? You know, that's a really good take, but I think – when he was a freshman and sophomore, he was still putting up numbers. I mean, it's not like this guy only was producing his sophomore year. Like, this guy came in as a true freshman and was producing for Georgia. Mm-hmm. So, I just think because of that, he – I think he probably could have came out his sophomore year if he had the ability to. It probably could have went to the draft and could have been like a, yeah, a sure. third-round pick. For sure. Like, he had the ability. And now – here he is, like, yeah, like, he's posting ACL tear. But honestly, when I was listening to a couple other shows, like, people are starting to look at ACL tears almost like high ankle sprains. Yeah, a lot of people are coming off of them. So, I just think because they're so frequent, yes, they are hurtful. Obviously, you're going to have to sit out and whatnot. But, I mean, as long as you can rehab it and you can rehab it well and get yourself back into football shape, Mm-hmm. I think there's no reason to dwell on those injuries anymore. Like, no. I think people have proven. You're right. That's a good point. I think people have proven that those are not necessarily obsolete, but you know, there's no reason to really be hesitant from those anymore. I mean, we. If so, you got to tell that to Marcus Humphrey <laughs> and all of those other guys from the Ravens who are just tearing their ACLs, who are still in their prime. Man, I don't know how I feel about George Pickens. Yeah. I think I think if I get him, I'll be happy with it. I think he's. I don't talented. think you have any. You don't have a chance against. I'm not saying. Teams. I'm saying hypothetically. Yeah. If I was in a situation where I had, let's say, the last pick of the first round, or towards the end of the first round, mm-hmm. if he's available at the one seven, I might go get him. I don't know if you need to get someone like him in the one seven. I think. I think George Pickens' dynasty projections for the draft. You should be looking at like. The beginning of the second. Like, you shouldn't be looking early first because I think there's still plenty of wide receivers out there like Chris Olave, yeah. Jameson Williams, a lot of people like that who you can still pick up. But I just think George Pickens' stock is rising. I think landing spots also play a big part Yeah, in that. I think another – yeah, I think that's going to be key as well, which, I mean, if he were to end up somewhere where he can get a target what if, early. What if Pickens big. ended up on the Packers? I would absolutely love that, man. I You don't think his stock would go up in general? I personally, if he was still available at the one ten, which I hold in our draft, I would take him. 100%. I think he would jump to the one seven, one eight, just because of his landing spot. Very well, but I mean, I think I'd be reeking the benefits whoever fell to the one ten, who wasn't naturally supposed to, though. Fair. Um, Fair. I don't I agree man. With that. I, I I think he gives me like big Marvin Jones vibes, and that, I, I just had a productive career. Yeah, I really I liked his career so far and so i think it's going to be the same thing for pickens i think he's going to have the same sort of production i don't think he's going to go lay an egg like marvin jones did this year but um i think uh yeah i think george pickens is going to be great going throughout his career so i i don't think we need to be hesitant what if he came out as the justin jefferson you know if he i think it's possible he could i don't know if he's explosive as jefferson is but i I think if you get him in the right scheme he very well could be. He With the right well. quarterback? Yeah. I mean, I could... I could. S- what if he went to Indianapolis or he went to the Colts? That'd be cool. Across- I, would like to, I would like to see him with Matt Ryan. I think that'd be interesting. Yeah. I, I don't think he could be, like, the number one there. And no. obviously they have Pittman there, so Pittman could be, like, the number one. Yeah. And he could be, like, a good... I don't know. He could be, like, a second piece. Mm-hmm. So I could like that. Yeah. I could definitely like that. I don't know if they... I don't know. I I don't know if you would be available around their draft. You know what I'm starting to learn? What's up, bro? I made a mistake last season in a trade that I did with you. Well, I think you've made a lot of mistakes in Dynasty recently. I've made some mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. Yeah, but tell but me about there this. was one in particular I was thinking about. It was when I traded you T. Higgins because I didn't think T. Higgins could be a top 10 receiver if he had Jamar Chase on his team. Oh, but you think he could now? I, I never said that, but... I'm starting to kind of get lured into it being possible. He could at least get into like the top 15, I think. For real. He could be close to it. Mm-hmm. He could be an Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson kind of situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's a good combination to kind of look at. Because I don't think they're going to be keeping Tyler Boyd. I'm, I'm just here so. to give you your flowers. 
I appreciate um, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know. mean, I'm, I'm the best. I mean, we don't need to tell the people that. I don't know about all that. But, you know, like, it's good to let them know. So, yeah, guys, I am the best. Um, Cap. What's, uh, what's the next guy I want to talk about? Let's talk about, just briefly, because I know we've talked about this guy before, but Jelani Woods. I know that you've liked this guy in the past. He's that huge guy out of Virginia, mm-hmm. uh, that tight end. Yeah, um, he's big as fuck. He's like six seven. Yeah, man. I think, I think this guy almost has the possibility of getting drafted in like the third or fourth round in the NFL draft. Yo, the Packers only signed Robert Tanyan to a one year deal. Yeah, yeah. Would that that like that's that that kind of says a lot in itself. Mm-hmm. The fact that they only re-signed him, who I thought was pretty productive, to a one year deal. Definitely, yeah. He that, has a bunch of tight or a bunch of tutties. What that tells me is the Packers might take a shot on another tight end or draft an, another tight end to see what they can do. And while they transition the tight end in to see how he fits their, into the game plan and into the team, they get to kind of see how it's a fit. And if they hit off with something, then they can let go of Tunyon and pay a rookie tight end. For sure, man. I think... A lot less, you know? Yeah, I think Jelani would be, be an excellent fit on the Packers just because, I mean, you can't teach that size. And I think that's exactly what they want on their team. I mean, when you look at what uh, Matt LaFleur had on the Titans that one year with Delaney Walker. Wait, what did you just say? Matt LaFleur. Who? Matt LaFleur. Oh, Packers coach. Cool. Yes, the okay. Packers coach. Yep, Matt LaFleur. Oh, okay. Um, okay. He had Delaney Walker on the Titans that one year, and I think that guy is like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, wasn't he? He kind of, well, yeah. So I think I think he kind of wants to replicate what they're doing on there, kind of like what you were speaking on before. Like, I think they want to be kind of, not necessarily like a run-heavy team, but they want to be able to be physical. And I think with the addition of another really good wide receiver, possibly like a Pickens, mm-hmm. who could run block really well, or, uh, you know, just someone like that. Just They need someone who can run block, that's for sure. I'm pretty sure that the first year that Matt LeFleur was on the Packers, uh, they went to the playoffs, and Aaron Rodgers only had like 22, 24 touchdowns that year. But they ran the ball well with Aaron Jones, who also had like 20-something touchdowns. Totally. And totally. that's something that has, especially with A.J. Dillon now, mm-hmm. You have two really good running backs. You have a solid line. Yeah. You can go out and get a nice tight end that can complement that that game. For that sure. That can check and release and go get open on a route after they, you know, like, bump a D-end or something. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, man. So, Jelani would really fit that well if we chose to, if we as the Green Bay Packers yep. chose to go and pick him up. Yeah, I think I, I think he'd be an absolute steal in like the third or fourth round for the Packers. Um and if if you're looking dynasty perspective, I think if the Packers are gonna um put another third round into a tight end I think it's safe to say that you could probably draft him around like the it's probably all about like obviously how you feel about it, but if you need a tight end you could probably take him around, like, the fourth or fifth, probably. I don't know. Like, I don't want to press anything into, like, the third, but if you want, you probably could. Okay. But Can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, who do you think is the best running back in this incoming draft? Oh, uh, I mean, the best overall running back would definitely be Brees Hall. Who do you think is number two? Uh, Kenneth Walker, the third. And who's your three? Uh, my three's a little interesting right now. I don't necessarily know. I think... Personally, for me, it's like a mix between like Brian Robinson out of uh, Alabama, or shoot, I don't know. Like that's a tough one. Like I want to say either Isaiah Spiller. No, not Isaiah Spiller, dude. I am not high on him at all. I'm not high on Isaiah Spiller at all. Like I, I don't like him. Like I don't think he has. A great, like he he has the body to be in the NFL, yes. But like outside of being able to catch the ball and be able to make a couple of jukes here and there, I don't know if he is necessarily going to be a productive back. 
Like, that's just my biggest... Like, I just... I feel like when I'm watching him, like... He doesn't necessarily really ever break break away. Like, it seems like there's extremely good blocking. And then the guy just somehow finds a hole. And he'll run away, but he typically gets chased down. Yep. So, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like in the NFL, like, those... Those touchdowns that he does break away for, I think, you know, like, in the NFL, those are going to be, you're tackled at, like, the 30, you know, and, like, that, that's good enough in the NFL, probably, but okay. the fact that you can have other people who can take it to the house, I like that a lot more. I like Isaiah Spiller as a fantasy RB2, possibly the RB1 of this draft class. Brees Hall is probably going to be the best. I'll give him that. And Kenneth Walker is explosive. So it really depends on who, where Kenneth Walker lands and where Isaiah Spiller lands. And then once that's decided, I can kind of make a better estimate of who's my two and three. Can you but, ex- can you explain to me why you like Isaiah Spiller? Because honestly, like we watch film together and like some of the stuff you, you point out, like I just think it's so elementary what he's doing. Like I feel like you could put a a fucking ham and cheese sandwich in the backfield and they they could do the exact same thing that, that he's doing. Can I tell you? Yes, please. So Isaiah Spiller, he's 6'1", 215, 220. So he has a pretty decent profile. He runs with good pad level. He always runs forward. And the most remarkable thing about his game to me is the fact that he's also able to be a more than capable. He's a good receiver. Like, he's not average. He's good. He's good catching the ball and making yards after it. He's good after contact because he's so big. And I don't know, man. He's a lot more elusive than I think he gets credit for. I don't think he obviously tested well at the draft. I think he ran something close to a 4-6-ish, almost 4-7, maybe 4-7. But regardless, I think he reads and he processes lane choice well. I think he has good balance. I think he's able to um, make sharp cuts. He catches the ball well, which is the number one thing I'm looking for in a fantasy running back. And I would say that if he lands somewhere where he can get a real opportunity, so let's say he goes to the Dolphins Mm -hmm. and he takes over the lead back role at the Dolphins, or let's say he goes... What year would he do that? Is that going to be... Before or after Raheem Mostert is the lead back there? Before and or after Mostert, Chase Edmonds Bro, leaves? Raheem Mostert might play seven games. Okay, but what about Chase Edmonds? No offense, but like... Okay, but what about Chase Edmonds? Chase Edmonds can have a role, and then they can also have a bruiser back. Chase Edmonds' role isn't to be the workhorse back. His role is to be the scamper out, catch a couple passes, and be explosive with them. Okay, you so know? can I tell you just three main points? Three. What are your three main points? So, these are all stats that, to me, they mean a lot. Okay. Like, you got to be at least proficient in one of these for me to like you as a running back. One is the 40. I'm player profiler. They have them marked at a 469, which has them in the 20th percentile. That's not great. His speed score. So, like, that's basically just, like, an average of, like, his burst. His ability, like, after he makes a cut, everything like that. They have him marked in the 26th percentile. And then his burst score, so just basically his natural ability to cut and burst, they have him in the 24th. And so with all of those at my disposal looking at him and what I'm seeing on film, like, I'm sorry, dude, but, like, people keep saying that he was, like, a starter all three years, da di da di da but no, he wasn't because Kalen Hill was in their backfield last year as their lead back. And that's how he got drafted to the Packers. I think to make this argument easier, we need to express where we project him being within this draft class. So if you're asking me, I project him to be a top three running back from this draft class in terms of dynasty fantasy rankings. So everyone's going to have a rookie draft coming up. Isaiah Spiller is within that top three running backs available for me and if I get him in the first round but maybe later in the first round 
I'm taking that as a as a dub, as well, a steal. All I think is like I think there's there was a lot of hype coming from Isaiah Spiller because like he was losing his lead back in Kalen Hill last year, and so he was supposed to be like the spotlight back. Okay. And so I think he was doing decent at Texas A and M, but like he never like absolutely stood out. Like he had a extremely good like he had a really good offensive line that spotlighted Kenyon Green, who's going to be drafted well before him this year. Uh, in his offensive line, and you look at the rest of the offensive line, it was pretty good as well. I mean, Texas a and they typically have a good offensive line. Okay. So, I don't know. Like I think he was just almost like a favor of good fortune, almost like yeah. Wisconsin, almost like I could see. we have like JT, who is obviously an amazing back, and we've had Melvin Gordon, James White. But between that two span, like we didn't have much of like a really good run ba- running back coming out. Though we still had really, really good linemen coming out. Like, in that span, I mean, you name it, we had it coming out. Like, we had tackles, guards, you know, like, centers. What if he ends up in Chicago? That would be laughable. Honestly, he would get, you'd be the third back behind, uh, uh, Khalil Her- Herbert. What if they draft him to take over the role after David Montgomery? I don't because th- David Montgomery's in a contract year right now. He he might he if he goes there. I think it's just I don't think it's gonna end up very well. But I could I could see the Bears. You could see the upside play on it though. No, I can see the Bears seeing the upside the play on it, and they're gonna jump on that because they're always like, oh, look at the upside. He's twenty one years old. He's still really young. But look at what he's never done. And the Bears, they never have a good offensive line. So you just don't think he's a starting running back, then? I don't. I truly don't, man. Like, I think he can go somewhere, and if he has an opportunity to sit and learn and hopefully, like, just build up his purse, like, his body to, like, be naturally faster and just stuff like that. But stuff like that, you can't... Not You're mad at him because he's a little slow? I'm not mad at him because he's... But he is a great receiver. You can be a great receiver, but then, he's a great receiver. Then be, he's a, a, then be a receiver. Great receiver, big guy, decent blocker. From what I understand, I don't hear a lot of negative remarks about it. And he also is big enough to go into the NFL and immediately be effective, in my opinion, because he's able to catch, which is going to get him in the game more. He's able to block, obviously. So now you're talking about three back appeal. He's a three down back because he's big enough to run the ball. He identifies lanes, sorry. He identifies lanes very well. Mm-hmm. And when he hits them, he hits them with a little bit of burst he has. You, bro, you don't need to be CJ2K or you don't need to be Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert is fast as fuck, but Raheem Mostert's also okay, hurt well, what all the I'm, time. Okay, what I'm saying is I want my players to have the ability to be those type of players. Like, I want players who are going to be dynamic backs, who can do more than just catch a ball. Like, this guy, to me, all he could look like he does that he can do well is catch out. Najee's not that fast. No, he's not. But what he can do is he can be a bruiser back and he can do it consistently. Like, with this guy, he isn't really doing much in between the tackles. Like, he'll average, like, three or four, if that. Like, he's just, he's not very good. It it doesn't seem like. Like, once he gets outside when he's catching the ball, he seems to find a little bit more space. But I don't know, man. Like, I just... Interesting. There's, there's something about the guy. Interesting. All right, so I want to talk about some of the players who got the biggest boost from offseason free agency. Yeah. So yeah. who would you want to start out with? My boy Jerry Judy. I just want to shout out. I Not saw him. Sutton? No, I saw Jerry Judy on Instagram. Oh, so. passes from Russell Wilson at like nine o'clock at night. Oh. And Russell Wilson was directing traffic and telling them where to go on the field. And Judy was like, all right, whatever, like, fuck it, like, as long as you shut up. And he ran around, and, uh, yeah, he basically caught a bunch of passes, and Russ captioned it, Wilson to Judy. Bro, can I just say something quick? Rain or snow. Bro, can I just say something quick? Morning or night. Can I just say something quick? Say it. This show isn't a hype train for your fucking fantasy team. What are you talking about? All you want to talk about are these people that are on your fantasy team. That's Jerry not true. G- Jerry Judy? Are you kidding me? You're telling me that you don't like Cortland Sutton's upside more from this transaction 
Like, are Jerry you joking Judy? me? No, I don't. But if I'm looking at the two cards or if I'm looking at the two players, I definitely think that Cortland Sutton has a bigger bump than what Jerry Judy does, personally. I I don't want to talk about what we're talking about pre-production or anything. Wow. Let's talk about this next player that you wanted to talk about. Wow. Quick. And let's look about if he was on your roster or not. Um, The second player I'd like to talk about is uh, Pat Fryermuth. Oh. On the Steelers. Do you own this person? I do not. Oh, wow. I do not. He's a That's tight refreshing. end as well. That's refreshing. He's a tight end as well. But he is somebody who... Big Ben the last couple of years wasn't the strongest arm. Pat Fryermuth was a rookie last year. He came in, he was effective, and he seems like he could be one of those guys. Like I'm talking like another like Keith Miller for the Steelers. Interesting. He has a really great uh, profile. He gets out in the space. He actually knows how to somewhat run routes. You know. So you're telling me he could be like a Mark Andrews for like for the Steelers? Basically, he could be like the Mark Andrews. So he's like basically like a satellite out there. Yeah, like, actually, I, I say that. So basically, get Mitch fair. Trubisky or whoever's starting out there is in trouble. Big old fire move. He's gonna be. Hey, I'm right here. Yeah. And then boom. Yep. Yeah. But he also tell has me, weapons Tell me on the what outside. you like about him. Tell me what you like about Fryer move. I like his size. I like his ability to block. I like the fact that he's obviously a fucking six four tight end. He's tall as shit. 6'4 isn't that huge for a tight end. Yeah, but I it's think a, that's huge. It's a tight end if you're 6'4 on the football field, you're probably one of the tallest people on the football field. Typically, yeah. So, I mean, what relative to NBA players, no, it's not super tall. But 6'4 and relative to just buff-ass humans, like, yeah, it's pretty tall. Right. Um, But he runs routes well. Typically, we hear about that three-year time period in which tight ends have to get accustomed to the game. Right. He seems to be well above that curve. Mm-hmm. And he's also somebody who you could probably go and get right now for maybe not his max maximum value because the Steelers don't have a quarterback yet. Mm-hmm. The draft doesn't happen for a couple more weeks. And if there's ever going to be a low period to buy him, it would be right now. And mm-hmm. I think that he's talented enough. He has enough draft capital. He was a second round pick, I think, for the Steelers. I don't know if he was a second round. I think he might have been third, but I know he came out of Penn State and he was really like people really liked him. I mean, yeah. I really liked his profile. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what his position on the Steelers were gonna be just because I mean, like we talked about it, like Big Ben, he just didn't have an arm at all the last couple of years, so mm-hmm. like it just naturally hurt everyone. Yeah. So I'm. It, it's nice to see like that. At least they have someone with an arm like Trubisky. He's not very accurate. But, you know, it's better than Roethlisberger because at least Roethlisberger couldn't get down the field like 40 yards, it didn't seem like. Uh, so, yeah. with, with Trubisky, he at least has an arm. Or if they go draft someone like a Matt Corral or something like that, you know, I think that be that could be a really good uh that could be a really good thing to watch or a really fun, uh, whether to see if it's a train wreck or to see if it's flourishes. So Pat Fryermuth in his first year had seven touchdowns. He had 80 targets for 60 receptions. That's great. And seven. For a first touchdowns. year, man. Yeah. You can't, you, I mean, you can't downlook that at all. Like that's, that's six, like, six, five, two sixty. Yeah. That's good size, man. Shoot. Yeah. Give it up to pop. Good for him. He's shaping up to probably be around a low end tight tight end tight end one. Mm-hmm. But he's somebody that if you can if you have the capital or if you have someone who's down on him right now for any reason, um, I would go and grab him while he's cheap. I think he has a lot of value. Right. To, yeah. Uh, I mean, another nice thing about Fryer move than I mean the Steelers. You know, you know he's not going to be stealing all those receptions that James Washington was going to be getting. James uh, Washington is going to be a beast in Dallas. Oh. He's going to be a beast. Is he? Can you tell me what beast. you really like about him? Cause I, Everything. I mean, he's a great I, receiver. Yeah. He, he doesn't do anything bad. He just had to. Bro, they drafted just Deontay, had target share, yeah. Deontay Johnson, Juju Smith-Schuster, and Chase Claypool. And they have Najee Harris. And before that, they had James Conner. Yeah. And before that, they had, you know, whoever. Like, they always have talent around him, so they aren't reliant on him to do much For he sure. kind of got overshadowed by three bro all three of those dudes could be wide receiver ones in the nfl 
Juju went to Kansas City and became a wide receiver one. Well, he wasn't one before the trade. He's a one right now. He is the I one. I don't right give now. a fuck what it was two weeks ago. Yeah. That's what it is right now. Yeah. And Chase Claypool could go somewhere like, I don't know. He could go to the Jets right now and be the one. Yeah. You know, like they have they've had a really talented room, and James Washington is going to be the three mm-hmm. on the Dallas Cowboys with Dak Prescott. He went to Oklahoma State. I think he owns a ranch in Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like a rancher guy. He has cattle, um, land. So he's got a big culture guy down Yeah, there. man. He might pull up in like some cowboy cowboy boots and a hat. Yeah. So he's somebody that I've always liked. He has humongous hands. He has D-hop sized hands. Yeah. His hands are humongous. Rancher hands. And um, that also means, I'm just going to assume he's probably a hard worker, but yeah. um, regardless, he also just never had opportunity, man. And even when he was in, he was catching mm-hmm. passes from someone who was kind of towards the end of their career. Yeah, I Big mean, ben. no, I was just giving you shit before. I think James Washington does absolutely have a lot of upside this There's season. There's a lot of upside. I mean, with with uh, the added benefit of, um, you know, potentially their number two not being healthy right away this Michael year. Michael Gallup is out with yeah, an ACL. Yeah, Michael Gallup could still be out. So if he could be stealing those number two targets to start the year, I mean, that's someone that you'll have to have to throw in your flex, if not that wide receiver two spot. Bro. Because you're getting Dak Prescott in that offense. Man, like that's... Amari that's, Cooper just left however many targets. Yeah. Probably like 120. Right. That you now got to spread around. CDs obviously going to see a decent amount of those, but I mean, yeah, even if you the break up a hundred, go. if you break up one hundred and twenty thirty three percent, so right. everyone gets a third, like that's still a that's still like almost mm-hmm. forty to fifty extra targets. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, unless they go and get like another receiver in the draft, but I don't think that would overshadow James Washington no. at this point. I think everyone gets peppered though. Everyone gets shares, yeah. even if you get twenty extra shares. That's a lot. Yeah, I mean, Dex. Even obviously, there is like a tier system between like CD and Amari. We're kind of around the same, but like when you look at Michael Gallup and uh, Cedric Wilson, like those two were definitely like kind of tiered down. Like it was I Michael think... Gallup and then Cedric and then. I honestly believe that James Washington has more upside than Michael Gallup. That's interesting. I mean, it'd be cool to see how long is the deal that he's on with them. Is it just a, a one year? So it's a one year prove a deal. Okay. Because he was obviously kind of overshadowed in Pittsburgh, and so yeah. they want to see what they're getting into. That's fair. So he's going home. He has a one shot prove a deal on the Dallas Cowboys, mm-hmm. who is who have produced fantasy relevant receivers for our entire lives. Right. You know, whether it be Des Bryant now or C.D. Lamb now or formerly Amari Cooper. Um, you got, you know, just so many legends. Even Miles Austin had a run. How, what, why do you say Des Bryant now, C.D. Lamb now, and then you say formerly Amari Cooper? Yeah. Like, Amari Cooper was more present than Des Bryant, like, formerly Des Bryant. <laughs> that's, that's just when he popped in my head. Man, yeah, crazy. Des Bryant, he he was trash, bro. He was trash. You weren't around in 2014, bro. I was a, I bet, I've been here since '97. Yeah, in dude. 2014, in 2014, Des got like it was some just ridiculous number of touchdowns. I don't care. like two a game. I don't care. Like two a game and. He went overdrafted for the following three seasons. Yeah. Until he retired. And I he's took not him necessary. I don't think he's I don't think he's officially retired yet. Like I think like the Packers were like people were saying like the Packers were low key looking at him last year. Yeah. Um anyways, man, like someone that I think their stock has kind of risen this year, uh, throughout the transactions, I think Whoa. is what's going on? Bruce Arians just stepped down from coaching. What? He's going to the front office. Wow. Do oh, you think shit. Do you think Byron takes his place then? Has to. That's sick. Good for him. Good for Byron. Or wait, no, they also have that defensive coordinator too. Who's their D coordinator? DeMarco or wait, did Marco just go somewhere? Shoot, I'm trying to think, man. But good, dang, dude, that's huge. Wow, so Bruce Arians is out and someone else is in. That's crazy. 
That's insane. What do you think happened? What What do you think prompted that? I'm I'm interested to hear that press conference. Oh, Ty Bowles is going to replace him as head coach. The defensive coordinator. Good for them. He's a really good coach. Let's go. That's dank as fuck. Wow, man, that's that's unreal. Good for them. Um, that's amazing. That's good shit. I'm interested to see what the. I don't think anything's really gonna change at all, uh, offensive wise or anything. I'm assuming they're gonna give Byron all like hands on, still just do your thing. Type. Yeah, probably. I mean, more probably reigns to, to Brady than anything. Mm-hmm. But. Mm-hmm. Wow, man. Well, that's, that's crazy. Kinda, yeah, that, that's, that's awesome. That's pretty crazy. I think so. One person I was gonna say that I think benefited from this off season, not only monetarily, but I think uh, what we're gonna see in uh, within receptions and everything like that is Christian Kirk. I think he's gonna be the wide receiver one on the Jags. Yeah. Yep. So if you got him, I would I, definitely say hold him. And I think uh, I think we're gonna be seeing some really cool things out of that scheme this year out of the Jaguars. I like Christian Kirk as well. Um, Knowing his coach now is Doug Peterson, Mm -hmm. who used to be the head coach for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yep. We did a little insight into kind of like what role would Christian Kirk play um, on the the offense this year with the Jaguars. And one thing that we found was that, you know, digging into Doug Peterson and his schemes, uh, when it comes to backfields, they're typically crowded. Yep. Uh, he typically has a lot of options in the backfield, um, but also with his receivers. Typically focuses. Typically, there's a couple of them yeah. um, that, you know, each get a share. But what I predict Christian Kirk to do, I would compare him to 2017 Nelson Aguilar mm-hmm. or Nelson Aguilar. Um, Doug runs a lot of RPO mm-hmm. and a lot of play action. And I think that Christian Kirk is someone who can be a quick slant guy, like just be a slot, go be the first read, catch the ball, run. Yeah, I think, yeah, he's... Or I does mean, someone over the top, too, you know? For sure. And I, I think the biggest thing about this hire, I think, is... I think they did it because he's a big football IQ guy. So I think with, like, those RPOs, like, you have to be ready at a moment's notice. Yeah. And so if he's able to read, like, the same thing that the linebacker's doing Mm -hmm. and he can translate that with uh, Trevor Lawrence, Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be beautiful. And I think that he has just the versatility to work anywhere within the X, Y, or Z. Yeah. Um, So, I mean, he's one of the most versatile receivers out there because of his size. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has great hands. Um, mm-hmm. I'm I'm excited about this hire a lot, or mm-hmm. with the signing a lot. So let's see what happens with that. But yeah, I mean, I think I think he has the potential to possibly just get it. I think he's gonna uh, just sneak in in between the top twenty this year. Okay, I, I think, like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, at least top twenty. I like that. Okay, I can see it. Well. Those are a couple of players that I thought got pretty significant boosts this yeah. offseason. There's also, I guess, Marcus Mariota, if you have him. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody that I know, uh, Dugo loves. Yeah. Dugo's a big Marcus Mariota well, fan. Well, I'm not a huge Marcus Mariota fan. I just like what he brings to an offense because he is truly, like, he's a dual threat quarterback. Like, he isn't the most prolific passer at all, but he, he can make throws he really can and he's mm-hmm. shown that from his days in Oregon to obviously he's kind of been all over the league now mm-hmm. but you know he he keeps trying to make a make his way when he got his opportunity this past year with the Raiders he looked pretty decent honestly mm-hmm. like I don't know like there was like some talk like oh like Marcus Mariota should start over Derek Carr like I mean he looked decent a couple of games when Carr was out mm-hmm. so I don't know. Like, I'm excited to see what he looks like in Atlanta. I think if they can get some targets around him. And I think they're going to obviously draft a running back in Atlanta. So, I think you're going to probably see a huge spike in them this year. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like, I just think between Marcus Mariota obviously just now being a starter. And, yeah, that running back in Atlanta, I think both of those are going to spike up tremendously. 
You would think so. Man. Uh, one thing I really want to go over, just some people as of right now, uh, who I could look at as like my fourth and fifth round steals in mm-hmm. like our rookie draft for uh, Dynasty. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking at like the fourth or fifth and you're kind of like, dang, like I need to take a flyer on someone. I'm not really confident on who it's going to be. Mm-hmm. These are just some people who, when you're looking at, mind you, this is all information I'm finding on Sleeper. And obviously, uh, this is about a month before the draft itself. So this is with no landing positions or anything like that. So just keep this in mind. Okay. Um, but uh First person is uh, Vilas Jones Jr., so that uh, wide receiver out of Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Right now, he's currently owned by 12% of the leagues in Sleeper and Dynasty. Okay. So I think this guy could definitely be a steal if you get him in, like, the fifth, I would say preferably. Just because, like, when you look at some of the work that he did at the Senior Bowl, like, he was making some of those guys look stupid. And obviously, <laughs> like, there's a lot of pe- like there's a lot of people who do that at the Senior Bowl. And when you're looking at the skill sets between some of these, like, midway, mid-range wide receivers and, like, the mid-range cornerbacks in the Senior yeah. Bowl, like, there's, a, there's obviously, like, a talent difference. Mm-hmm. Like, some of those mid-range ra- wide receivers are much more prepared. Um, I'd agree with that. So, I don't know, like, just, like, the separation that he can bring. Yeah. And also, his 40 was unbelievable, too. I think he was in the four threes. Mm-hmm. So, I think there's overall, like, this guy, he, he's, he, he could be a sleeper, man. Like, it might take him, like, a couple of years. Like, he might have to throw him on your taxi. But I think he, he could be someone that you could have on your roster, for sure, to take a, a flyer on, even though his age is... Starting to creep up. I think he's about like 24 or something. So, like, that's not great. Yeah. But at the end of the day, man, like, his talents, I think it they could be compared to, like, a Chris Olave almost. Okay. So, uh, next person, uh, Wandale Robinson, dude. Man. So, the reason why I think he could uh, drop to, like, the fourth or fifth is just because there's a huge, like, hesitant with the... Uh, some like the scouting personnel because like when he went to the combine he did uh, his official height was five ten mm-hmm. and it wasn't up in like the five eleven six foot that people were projecting. Yeah. So I mean, just some of like that twitch that a lot of people wanted to see. Yeah, you're shifty. Like it, it's obviously there, but like the size just isn't type of thing. Yeah. And so I think. So, just to give you a reference right now, he's actually already owned in 48% of fantasy or in uh, sleeper leagues. So, like, that's kind of sick. Like, people drafted already? Yeah, 48% of people who have drafted, they've uh, he's owned in those leagues. Wow. So, I mean, like, Wondell Robinson, like, he, he has all the potential in the world, especially if he gets to a good landing spot. Wow. Wink, wink, the Chiefs. Like, where he could pop Who does the draft before the NFL draft? I, there's a lot of people, I guess, man. Like, if don't do that. Wait till the draft. <laughs> wait, wait till goddamn impatient asses until hey man, after I mean, the there, NFL draft. There's a lot of people doing a lot of different things. <laughs> do, do your stuff, man. No, dude, don't. That, I wouldn't. Don't join that league. <laughs> hey, man. I mean, 48 percent of people who have drafted, they've drafted this cat, and I'm I mean, fucking wrong. He. he hey, of. man. He has some upside for sure. Let's see what happens though. Um, just because, like, I know. Um. Like, with the revealed height and stuff, that could be an impact on the line. So, if he's available in your league around the fourth or fifth, I'd definitely take him. But, honestly, he could be taken in, like, the third. I yeah. think a lot of people like this guy. Yeah. Um. Next. He kind of gives me, like, Dwayne Eskridge vibes. Not necessarily. I think he, get, he gives me more, like, closer to, like, almost like Tyreek type shit. I don't know about all that. I don't know. I don't know. It, that's just what he looks like on the field to me. Uh, next person who you could possibly take in like the fourth or fifth, uh, Romeo Dubes out of uh, he's out of Nevada. He's a wide receiver right now, currently owned in twenty eight percent. Next, Kyle Phillips. He is a wide receiver out of UCLA. Uh, more of like a slot guy, but yeah. you know he he definitely could fill a position out there for someone. Uh, right now, currently owned in thirteen percent. Jake Ferguson out of Wisconsin, the tight end. 
<laughs> Bro, right now he's only owned in seven percent of leagues. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like if you have the opportunity to take this guy in the fourth or fifth, I just think this guy is gonna blossom into something huge in the NFL. Like he just has that size. He's uh six four, two fifty. Okay. He went to Wisconsin, so obviously he's a born blocker. Oh, born. But block. man, like he he has possibly some of the best hands I've ever seen out of at least in this wide receiver class for sure, or tight end class. He definitely has some of the best hands. Uh Zakat Zaquandre Z- White. Yes, Zaquandre White. Zaquandre White. He is the running back out of uh, South Carolina or University of South Carolina. Uh, currently owned in 19% of the leagues. I definitely think this guy could uh, be a late round flyer. Uh, definitely has that body type that Jahia likes. That six whoa, one, two twenty. You know he's definitely built to take some punches <laughs> in the middle. Um, you know, like I said, he's owned in nineteen percent of leagues. I would definitely take a flyer in this guy in the fourth or fifth <laughs> if you have an excess amount of picks. And obviously, depending on if you're in need of a running back. Lastly, uh, Zavon uh, Highly. Um, Javon Hiley. Javon Hiley. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Javon Hiley. Yeah. Javon Hiley. Yeah. He's so this guy. He's owned in eight percent of leagues. Uh, he's coming out of Coastal Carolina. Uh, the reason why I like this guy is because he was pretty effective there, and obviously that's not really a big name school or anything like that. But he was catching what I would call professional passes from his quarterback there, who I am extremely high on which is Grayson McCall um again these guys are out of coastal Carolina so you could uh I mean same school as Isaiah Likely uh etc cetera, etc cetera. like there's not a lot of people who have come out of the school lately but it is looking kind of decent down there right now so I don't know, man. Like, I think this guy he could potentially be like a fifth round pick if not you could get him in, like undrafted, I think, and depending on his landing spot, I think just because he is six three, or I'm sorry, I think he's six one, um, and like I think he's around two hundred pounds. He's uh, I don't know, man. Like he just has like a decent profile. He has really sticky hands. He catches about every ball, and it seemed like every catch that he had around the sidelines, he was getting both feet down rather than just one, which was required in college. So it seems like he's almost pro ready. Javon Hiley has good height and length for the position. He's a good overall athlete. He has um, some shiftiness to him. And he's out of Coastal Carolina. Yep. He's almost guaranteed to be a day three prospect in the NFL oh, draft. Oh, most definitely, yeah. Natural catcher, good hands, soft hands, doesn't lose the ball too much. The only negatives that I can see from his scouting report is that he's loose on route breaks. So if he's loose on... The only negative thing that I can find from his scouting report is that he can be loose on route breaks. And he has below average play strength. So he's a smaller guy, slider frame. And he's somebody to where, you know... um, he doesn't maybe have all the physicals. He's six feet. He's probably closer to six feet than six one. Mm-hmm. And he's a I don't want to say undersized, but he's slim. And so he's really going to have to depend on his routes. And if his scouting report is coming back that he's loose on route breaks, mm-hmm. or if he doesn't accelerate out of routes well, he's not going to get any playing time. For sure. There's not going to be any separating factors at that high of a level. Yeah. Which is the only reason I would say he probably has to be towards the end of the fifth in a fantasy draft. Yeah, definitely probably. I mean, I would say anywhere in the fifth. It just, it would depend on his landing spot. Like, if he were to go somewhere like, let's say, like, the Packers and, and or, like, the Bills or, like, the Chiefs. You know, somewhere where, like, they typically have, like, either, like, a high-flying, uh, like, quarterback or if they just naturally have like a good quarterback that will get them catch or passes, and if they don't have uh, like a crowded wide receiver room, just something like that. Like I think. That's... I think. 
it, it obviously just depends on his landing, but I think he could he could be in that category just because. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Like I I. I don't disagree with his scouting report with him saying that he's a little bit lazy out of those breaks, but realistically, it seemed like he was always getting separation. Okay. Um, just like. It, it, it looks so smooth out there. Like, yeah, like, he wasn't always, like, getting a bunch of separation to where, like, he was able to break away right away. And he doesn't have breakaway speed. I think he ran, like, a 4.6. Okay. So, there's that little notch against him. But, like, I truly think, like, he's a true... He's, like, what? a possession guy. Like, he's gonna be somewhat like a... Like, I don't know. Like, not like a T.Y. Hilton or something like that, but... I'm trying to think of like a good, like a Donovan People Jones kind of yeah like kind of like a I think Donovan People Tim Jones Patrick. I think no not Tim Patrick Tim Patrick's like six three oh yeah true but Donovan People Jones is possibly a better uh, comparison mm-hmm. so that's uh, a comparison that I actually read on Bleacher Report shout out to um, them um, yeah so Bleacher I would, Report did an article about this guy um, back in like January for about sure Javon Haley and they just listed some of the benefits and um, some of his strengths and weaknesses. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, like, reading it now, and it's interesting. Yeah, man, I just, I think he's a good prospect, I think. So I think landing spot's going to mean the world for this kid. I think whether he goes somewhere, like I said, like, where it's extremely crowded, that's going to hurt his capital a lot. You're probably not going to draft this guy. But, like, if he goes somewhere, like I said, like, Potentially the Packers, the Chiefs. Let's say like he goes to the Rams, who could always need more targets. They always need uh, more targets. The Seahawks, you know, something like that. Yeah. Um. No, nah, actually, the Rams got Tutu Atwell. Bro, Tutu Atwell's dude. Tutu five, Atwell could eight. go off. Tutu Atwell could go get He's like a five eight. He doesn't. Role. He doesn't do the same thing that Javon Hiley's gonna do. Tutu Atwell is going to get a shine, bro. Yeah, but like he's 5'8". Tutu he, Atwell has a ring. He, he plays a completely different position. Tutu Atwell is an NFL champion. Okay, but all I'm saying is he is playing a completely different position than what my boy is doing. Tutu Atwell. I'm done talking about Tutu Atwell. Tutu Don't Atwell has a ring. Me. All right. Let's talk about the next thing that we have on our agenda, bro. So, let's say you were the 1-1. One, one, and, obviously, you don't have to take this person in particular would you rather take Brees hall or Traylon burks let me ask you who would you rather have Brees hall or Traylon burks well i just asked you that oh so i was hoping you answer but i would definitely take Brees hall 100 oh. percent. but that's only because that's what i you would take who i would take Brees hall okay 100 percent, bro okay Hundred percent over Traylon Burks. Yeah, hundred percent. Fair enough. What if Traylon Burks ends up on the Chiefs? Uh, I am still taking Brees Hall. I'm not gonna have a opportunity. I don't think to take Brees Hall, but I would take Brees Hall hundred percent. Okay, so it wouldn't make a difference if he ended up on the Bears either. No, I feel like the Bears might go get a receiver. In the Bro, draft. if Brees Hall ends up on the Bears, I might not take Brees Hall. I hate the Bears that much. That'd be fair. I wouldn't blame you. Um, but I kind of agree with you. I would take Brees Hall too over over Traylon. That's I'd kind of a have stupid question. Back. I hate that question a lot. Okay. Jk. Oh okay. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's really all I got. So my name is Ja. Yeah, I'm Dugo. Um, bitch. Man, well, I thought we were gonna talk QB rankings for fantasy football. Can you kind of tell me what your QB rankings are for uh, rookies this year? Malik Willis for fantasy probably goes one. Yeah. Just because of his rushing ability too. Number one prospect, not number one overall. No, yeah, number one quarterback prospect. I would have to say that I would go with Kenny Pickett as the two. Interesting. Okay. What do you like most about what do you like about Kenny Pickett? Bro, Pickett's a winner, like and what I mean by that is that he's been effective. He's been extremely effective. Not necessarily. Like his first couple like the two years before this, I think, were, like, just about, like, identical stats. Like, he was around, like, the 24, like, passing touchdowns and, like, 16 interceptions. Bro, like, he was fourth was in the nation. He was fourth in the nation in touchdowns. Yeah, this past year. Yeah. But not the two years prior to that. 
when he was a starter. The fuck do I care about two years ago? Tell me what he did, like, after he improved. Uh, he improved, obviously. Okay, well, all I'm talking about is, like, that Dominator rating that everyone's talking about. This guy must have took a huge notch because it took him a year to dominate longer. Yeah, he was a senior, but maybe just... Oh, that's all I'm saying. Is he wasn't I mean, good like, enough to come that... as a junior, but, I mean, at some point, like, when you're good enough, when do we just give you credit for being good enough? I don't know, man. Let's see what he does because, I mean, the ACC isn't very good with football anyways. I mean, their defensive backs are typically... Typically pretty lackluster, but I mean that's just my opinion. Man, give me Kenny Pickett as a two. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Like, tell me, can you round it out the list for me? Give me your top five. Um, I'll probably have to go with Matt Corral as a three. Okay. Um, just stereotype. I don't. He could be. It depends on where he goes, but I don't think he's really going to be given the opportunity. Yeah, I don't think. Teams are really going into this draft hunting for quarterbacks. Right. They're just waiting until next year. Um. So I think that. Well, I think there. I think there are definitely some teams that are in need of QBs right now or want to take flyers on them. Like I've seen some mock drafts recently of, like even like the Saints taking flyers on QBs. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, they just signed Jameson William or Jameson Winston to a two-year deal, uh-huh. um, which is cool. But I mean, two years for a quarterback. I mean, you can change over so quick with that. Yeah, I I would take Sam Howell four, and then Desmond Ritter fifth. Okay. Um, I had to keep Ritter just because, I mean, he has a pretty good profile: six three, two eleven. He has to work on his accuracy a little bit, but I believe that that's something... He could be a serviceable backup. Yeah. I don't think you're going to have five starting quarterbacks from this draft. No. Um, fourth would be Sam Howell. He played for North, for North Carolina. He's a little bit smaller. Uh, he's mobile. He's able to extend plays. He ran for around 800 yards last year, 11 touchdowns. Mm-hmm. And I think he had almost 100 rushing yards in seven of 12 games. Oh, okay, nice. That's a that's really... a lot. That's a, that's good for fantasy. Yeah, that's... if he gets a starting role somewhere though. For sure. Yeah, I mean that's sweet. Um, I don't. I just. I always have a bad feeling about uh, quarterbacks from North Carolina, especially the last one left a really bad, bitter taste in my mouth with uh, Mr. Trubisky. Yeah. So like, I'm always a little paranoid with that. You know, um, that's fair. So we'll see what happens. I just. I don't really trust ACC quarterbacks all that much. I don't really do much. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, obviously, one of the uh, key exceptions would be Trevor Lawrence because he went and won a national championship, at least. Um, and you could probably say Mike Vick out of uh, Virginia Tech as well. At least, actually, that might have been the Big East at the time as well. Interesting. But regardless, like ACC quarterbacks, for some reason, to me, it just that it doesn't really pan out well. So, mm-hmm. that's just why I'm not too high on Pickett or Desmond Ritter. Okay. Or, I'm sorry, not Desmond Ritter. I'm, I kind of like Desmond Ritter, but Sam Howell is another quarterback I'm not high on. hmm Yeah, it's Pickett and Howell, not super high on. Uh, if I had to do my top five quick, it would be Malik Willis. Uh, I'd probably go uh, Matt Corral, my second. Um, Kenny Pickett third, Desmond Ritter fourth, and uh, Matt Howell probably five for me. Nice. Okay. So relatively. Kind of pretty similar pretty to yours. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. I think Malik obviously is the top one now. He has the highest least. ceiling by far. Definitely. Yeah. And um, then obviously after that, it's almost like, who do you like? He actually, Kenny Pickett broke uh, Deshaun Watson's. ACC record for most passing touchdowns in a season. That's sweet. That's cool. That's a, that's a nice stat to have. That's I, impressive, I'll... bro. And he didn't play for the same... Like, Deshaun Watson had Clemson. Yeah. Like, that's a that's an all-around good roster. Kenny Pickett was on uh, Pitt. That was at the beginning of Clemson, though, mind you. Regardless, they had probably better recruiting than Pitt. Probably. Well, I mean, that's to each their own at the time. I mean, yeah, you have... I, I don't want to dig into college football right now, like, but I, there's obviously a difference. I think Clemson probably has a better recruiting. You're not wrong there, mm-hmm. but you never know. Like they, they could have also got like a bunch of transfers this past year or something. But regardless, um, 
Yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know. He, he could be something. Otherwise, he could also not be something. We'll never yeah. know. Or we will know soon, actually. So Yes, we will. Uh, honestly, man, I am I think I'm pretty much all done. I don't have much else I need to talk about tonight. You got anything? I'm all good. Um, thank you guys for listening. Um, we will tap in with you next week, Friday. Yeah, um, we'll let you know if we know anything more about the Bruce Arians stuff going down. That's pretty wild. That's, that's, so what do you think that does for uh, people like Chris Godwin, Mike Evans? Like, uh, right now, Bruce Arians is a pretty aggressive play caller. I think right now it's a little. Uh, I think it's a little early to I, I would judge imagine, on that. I think I'd imagine that that's going to become a more run heavy offense at some point. I don't know. I don't know anything about Todd Boyle's offensive scheme, so let's figure out what happens with that before sure. we make any opinions on what's going to happen fantasy wise. But regardless, thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you. Um, we'll tap in with you next week. My name's Ja. I'm Dugo. And we are, we out.